Jonathan Hickman and Stefano Caselli continue the new era Krakoa finds itself in as Destiny is welcomed onto the Quiet Council, but Xavier and Eric make moves to try and stop Mystique from exacting her revenge on them. Jonathan Hickman continues his just stellar X-Men event with another really huge issue that reveals so much more to Mystique's story. I love that Hickman didn't beat around the bush and just showed us that yes, Mystique was the one who's been manipulating pretty much everyone on the island to get Destiny not just resurrected, but also on the Quiet Council with her as well. It was so much fun seeing Raven getting the spotlight and getting revenge on these characters, especially after watching what Eric and Xavier put her through by using her as sort of like their own personal assassin spy, and then flat out denying her request to bring Destiny back, so she had to take it into her own hands. Hickman handled it all really well, and it was great seeing the fallout from all of these plans come together, and with Eric and Xavier also scheming themselves, and as I've said before in current reviews and on the Comic Multiverse podcast, it feels like we are heading towards a schism forming between the mutants on Krakoa, with sides with Xavier and Eric and Destiny and Raven all forming, and there might be even a war coming very soon. So I'm excited to see what Hickman has in store for the next two issues, especially now that Colossus is on the Quiet Council, and that's kind of a big deal, since if you aren't reading any of the other X-Men books, he has actually been compromised and been turned by an anti-mutant organization called Z know it's messed with his mind and he's not technically colossus anymore so to have him on the council is kind of a big sort of wow moment Stefano Caselli's artwork continues to just wow me with all the little details and use of color and paneling. I really loved the callback to issue 1 where Mystique, disguised as various mutants, basically played through Moira's plan to get Destiny's DNA, but instead of destroying it, she uses it to recreate Destiny. It was so fun seeing the other side of these scenes and how well Castelli constructed them. Inferno issue 2 was another stellar issue from Jonathan Hickman and Stefano Caselli, revealing all of Mystique's recent plans and sides that are beginning to form for the inevitable war that's coming to mutant kind. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. Inferno issue 2 finds Mystique enact her plan, disguising herself as Magneto to steal Eric's Cerebro before impersonating Xavier, donning the helmet as she meets with Sinister, who can see through her tricks, but he still gives her Destiny's DNA files. Mystique gives the DNA to the Five, getting them to use it on an egg to bring Destiny back to life. Since Mystique is no psychic, though, she gives the Cerebro helmet to Hope, telling her that it's time she learned how to use it. Hope uses the Cerebro to put Destiny's memories back in her body as Xavier cries, telling Hope she did a good job and the Five should go celebrate. He lets her keep Cerebro as the Five leave and Mystique morphs back into her original form, helping Destiny, helping her through the resurrection process and coming to terms with being alive again. Destiny, however, is overcome by her powers, finding it all too much, and she begins seeing everything, wanting to get away to somewhere quiet. Mystique takes Destiny home, and for a week, she was almost driven mad by the endless waves of possible futures happening. Mystique's love, though, for the woman brought her back from the brink, and by the fourth week, Destiny was ready to enact their plan for her to join the Quiet Council. In the present, the vote is soon put to motion, but before they vote, Charles has questions about how Destiny was resurrected. He knows the questions will have to wait and until the notion to vote her out is brought up. The mutants vote, with Magneto and Xavier and Storm voting no, but Nightcrawler votes yes, knowing that it would please his mother Raven. Exodus, though, has been bribed by Mystique, told earlier that the Prophet will be resurrected soon and a Prophet can see the future of the island and preserve its way and uplift it, something Exodus wants greatly, so he happily votes for Destiny, and so does Mr. Sinister, seeing as Mystique also approached him, promising him free reign in his experiments. Kate votes no and Sebastian Shaw is next, and Mystique also tracked him down, fencing with the man and telling him that Emma will vote against it, so out of his petty grudges, Shaw votes yes. The vote comes down to Emma Frost, who Mystique also bribed behind Shaw's back, gifting her a box containing something she desperately needs. Emma realizes the thing is she asked the hooded people for at the Hellfire Gala, something Mystique stole from them and will give to Emma if she votes yes. Emma does so, meaning that Destiny is welcomed onto the council. Destiny is grateful and feels like she is actually wanted now, asking Charles about the other vote to remove her, but Xavier closes out the meeting in silence. 
Orchis, meanwhile, continue their evil machinations as they try and open a transmutation portal with Terra Verde, but it soon fails, so the test is cancelled. As the scientists get to work fixing it, Nimrod meets with a Mega Sentinel who has been watching the robotic being as he's been running his own simulations and aging up, and she's been waiting for him to get to where he needs to be so Nimrod can finally see what she really is. Moira, meanwhile, is enraged that Destiny is back as Xavier explains that Mystique beat them at their own game. Moria wonders how and why they voted against them and Xavier knows that they should have seen this coming as Eric knows Mystique bribed many of their members with something they wanted. Moira warns them not to test Destiny and Mystique, and while they have been blind for a season, they won't be soon, and soon it will be war. Charles knows that she sounds pragmatic about these actions that might lead to her having blood on her hands, but Moria reassures him there's always blood on her hands. Moira asks the men if they can just kill her, but Eric refuses to since he refuses to ruin Krakoa, knowing that he's been waiting his whole life for this place. Moira demands that they do something, so Eric suggests that they fill the last seat on the council with their own puppet. The three know that it would require total commitment if they bring them in on this, and Xavier reveals that he wants Emma on the team. Moira thinks that if it's Emma, at least she will understand the gravity of what Destiny and Mystique are up to. At Mutant Ops, Sage signs off her computer to take her break, engaging the security protocols as Mystique, disguised as Sage, arrives, getting into the systems and finding out about the Paris safe house and Orchis watching them and how Xavier has redacted everything there. Heading to the safe house, Mystique Mystique manages to infiltrate the Orchis lab there, finding it not to be what she expected as one of the ape scientists says that the mutants thought that terraforming a planet was something, but just wait until they see the full power of the sun and what it can do. Mystique returns home as at the Louvre, Emma clears out the entire building as she meets with Moira, Xavier and Eric. The men reveal that Moira isn't a human like Emma thinks, she is a mutant and she has been helping them from the very beginning. Moira decides to let Emma into her mind, so Emma is overcome come with what she sees and the many lives of Moira. Xavier tries to help her up, but Emma knocks him away, demanding to know how long ago Magneto learned about this. Eric tries to make up an excuse, but she continues to demand to know how long. Moira says that Xavier and Eric trust her, so she's the first one in on this, and they're doing this for their nation. Emma changes into her diamond form to prevent anyone from messing with her mind, saying that they manipulated her, and now she can see the threat Destiny poses, and she wants to give the matter proper consideration, but they no longer have her loyalty thanks to what they did. Moria wonders if they just made an enemy out of Emma Frost, but Xavier is unsure. Moira admits that she was wrong and they were better off with someone that they know they can trust. Later at the Quiet Council, Xavier opens a vote to have a mutant join them on the council. Everyone votes yes except for Mystique, Destiny, and Shaw, but the vote passes, so Colossus is welcomed onto the council as its new member.